Hey everybody, just wanted to give you a video um, about how to tune up an HW101, a Heathkit HW101. That's for my friend John KF5GMC, who was recently uh, recommissioned HW101 himself, and just wanted to show him how I uh, tune up this uh, uh, transceiver uh, using an antenna tuner. Um, so the system I use is I use two meters. Bottom meter, just as a general uh, indication of uh, transmitter output, it's not really calibrated at all, so I really don't take its reading for much of anything other than, oh look, there's forward output. <laughs> what I do is I concentrate on the larger meter up top. I use that to give me an indication uh, at a glance of reflected power, so as to see if there's any reflected power and therefore to be able to adjust it without having to switch back and forth on this function switch between forward and reflected on the meter which considering this is not calibrated it doesn't really give you much of an indication of anything <laughs> so this is much better in terms of giving me a better idea of what my reflected power is so I have intentionally put everything out of adjustment um, hang on a sec technical difficulties so first what we're going to do now is set the mic CW level about halfway. I don't set it all the way up uh, at first just because in case um, I do not want to uh, run the PA all the way open uh, when it's out of resonance. And I want to also limit the amount of the time I spend in tune mode especially during these first stages when everything is way out of uh, way out of um, optimal adjustment just to prevent any stress on the finals. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to switch over to the this meter here. We have it set to 200 watts forward power. I'm going to bring the uh, HW101 into tune mode. We'll see if we get any refl any uh, indication. Very little indication. I have this mic CW level up all the way. So okay, we're we're pretty far out of adjustment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the final knob bring the mic CW up just to get enough indication and adjust that see if we get anything oh hey we got something that's cool but turn it uh, take it out of tune mode um, just quickly now what I do now is back the mic CW level down just a little bit so we get less of an indication about that much I want to adjust the pre-selector we get any peak on the pre-selector yeah, a little bit and we're just I just now I'm adjusting the final knob again just to see just to peak everything now we seem to be pretty much peaked with both the final knob right here as well as the driver pre-selector. So now we're going to make sure that our antenna is in resonance now that the transmitter seems to be in resonance and we can always fine tune this later but we seem to be in the ballpark. I'll come back over here and we're going to set this to reflected power we're going to bring the scale First, actually, let's put it in a, to keep it in 200-watt scale, just in case we're really grossly out of tune. Now we're going to... Now I have the mic CW level a little bit past halfway up. Now you can see we have a, a little bit of reflected power. That means we can do some adjustment here on both our transmitter and antenna matching in order to bring everything into resonance. So now what we're going to do now is we're going to bring the mic CW... I have the mic CW level up all the way when I was showing you the maximum reflected power. I'll bring it back down to a little bit past halfway. Get a little bit of uh, indication. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust the transmitter and antenna matching in order to try to bring that down as far as we can. And it's going down a little bit onto the antenna matching and even further. Okay. Now if I had two hands available to me, which I don't now because I'm holding the camera, I'd have my right hand on the function switch to bring it out of two mode as soon as I brought that down to zero and the other my left hand would be adjusting both the transmitter and antenna matching so I'd be able to cut a little bit of more a little bit of time off it is making me slightly uncomfortable having to sit here with that thing going away uh, at, f at, uh, at full bore the transmitter while I'm sitting here adjusting these knobs it, it makes me a little, little geez, I'm, uh, it was just my lampshade falling off its uh, off its hanger there. Um, it's uh, usually I uh, I like to uh, you know even though I didn't spend that much time in tune mode I like to keep things the amount of time spent in tune mode to a minimum. Um, 
but thankfully nothing was really that badly out of adjustment. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to switch to the 25 watt setting. We're still in reflected power. I'm going to see if we have any reflected power still around. Yeah, this 25 watt setting obviously will give us much better resolution. Bring that forward. Like CW level all the way up. And we have just a little bit left. So now let's try let's try adjusting the antenna matching first. So we can bring that down a little bit. And Yep, getting close. Getting really close. And then bring Done. Now we're all matched up. I was just adjusting, I was just alternating between the transmitter matching and the antenna matching. This, far more of a coarse adjustment. This, far more of a fine adjustment. So now, when we're all done, we can bring this back to forward 200 watts, and we'll see how much total output power we're getting out of this. I'm going to bring the mic CW level down about halfway, and slowly advance it up. Now I just adjusted the final the final knob there just to get a little bit more out of it. Now I'm futzing with the pre-selector. We're getting about 90 watts out. I can get more out of it, sure, by increasing the loading, but do I want to? Not really. It's, you know, just put my uh, put the uh, 6146s under more stress. And the 10 watts is not going to do me any good. Now the difference between 5 and 10 watts and at the QRP level, such as when using the ICOM IC703, it's a big difference. But between 90 and 100 watts, mm, you're not gonna you're not gonna notice it. The other the station at the other end will not notice the difference. So now what we're gonna do now is just as a final check. I usually don't do this because I know that the uh, neutralization on my transmitter or excuse me transceiver is quite good. Therefore, maximum output power does correspond with a minimum of plate current. However, if you want to make sure, we can always just take a look. So let's go over here. And we have this set um, in the plate position. Now we're going to switch this to two mode. Hang on a sec, just got to rearrange the light here. And now mic CW all the way up and two mode. Looking at about between 20 and 40, so it's probably about 230 milliamps or 230, 235 milliamps of plate current. Now the maximum they recommend is 250, which is the, uh, the 40 mark. And I usually run it a bit less than that. Um, I usually run a little bit more, a little bit less loading, so it usually sits around uh, 20, which is about 225. So, but that's pretty much how you tune this guy up. Um, as I mentioned, don't spend much more than 10 seconds or so per application, uh, per uh, um, per time you spend in adjusting uh, either resonance of the final PA or the antenna tuner itself and um, if let's after let's say two sessions of 10 seconds let it sit and cool for you know about a minute or so um, these run quite hot these HW101s do run hot um, during the winter here in my room here it's usually about 63 degrees or so in my room and I do not need to use any sort of cooling however during the summer I use um, two 80 millimeter case fans that are mounted um, uh, via tape, not drilling. Don't drill into your radios. <laughs> um, uh, on the back, and I run those to keep the rig cool because in during the summer it gets very hot, and this uh, these early printed circuit boards, you know, they've been heated and cooled for. 30 plus years they're getting a little bit tired of it so any any um, break you can give them will be much appreciated by them so that's pretty much how you uh, how I tune up my HW101 I really recommend it that you get two meters <clears throat> one to show you forward output power and one to be a dedicated uh, reflected power it really does allow you to see things much more quickly adjust things much more quickly and um, it keeps your rig happier, I believe. I've always found cross needle meters to be really confusing. Um, some people can understand them. I just my my eyes, my brain just look at it and go, "What on earth is that?" So if, you know, one meter per function for me works works quite well. 
Um, so hey, now let's see if anything's on the band. Uh, it's about 1 p.m. now. Oops, sorry about that. Light. And uh, 20 meters has been quite dead. So let's see if anything's on for you. Oop. Uh, somebody. Didn't get his prefix, I'm not sure where he's from. Maybe he'll come back. Oh, for a really good job. And one J I O Q R P four one. Uh from uh from the church of the point anyway. I'll be back shortly. I'll give you another video with uh, a much more received time on this. Take care.